The idea of storing baking ingredients on board can feel a little daunting, but there are just a couple of easy tricks that make it much easier to keep those baking supplies at your fingertips right when you need them. Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. I'm talking about storing baking supplies on a boat, thinking about things like the container and also maybe where on the boat you actually put them. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by MantisMarine.com, maker of the Mantis Anchor, now available in models with and without a roll bar. Proven to set reliably in the most challenging bottoms, the Mantis Anchor digs like no other, making anchoring safer and boating more enjoyable. We love our Mantis M2 on Calypso and think it's absolutely one of the best adders that we did before we left to go cruising this last time. Mantis Marine brings to market practical, durable, and affordable marine products, including anchoring gear, scuba diving accessories, and a rechargeable waterproof headlamp for hands-free lighting. Their newest is a solar charging nav light for your dinghy. Visit mantismarine.com and see for yourself. I don't know about you, but I love to bake on board. The good news is that it's not that hard to properly store your supplies, although you do need to invest in some good plastic containers. And when we're talking about baking supplies, the same sort of thing applies when you're talking about breakfast cereals also. What do I consider baking supplies? Flour, sugar, yeast, baking powder, salt, and oatmeal. I usually have stocks of flour and sugar divided into probably a couple of different parts. There's a small container easily accessible for everyday use. And then I have my other main stocks kept into separate containers. I buy my flour in individual bags in the smallest size pretty much that I can take that I can find and sugar in the regular sort of two pound bags that you can find in the States. When you leave the U.S., you'll find flour and sugar in sometimes in bulk containers. And those I think you have to be especially careful of because they may have bugs already in them. Overall, it's definitely better to use plastic containers with locking lids to store the baking supplies instead of putting them in Ziplocs. As Carolyn puts it in her article on the Boat Galley website that this podcast actually is based on, she's had far more problems with Ziplocs developing pinholes through which bugs and moisture can enter. Personally, Nika, I've found that using the freezer Ziplocs that are a bit heavier than the regular everyday ones can help mitigate an awful lot of those issues. But you do have to watch it, particularly if you reuse your Ziplocs after washing them, as I do. Sometimes, though, Ziplocs are the only choice for what will fit in a particular location. And in that case, definitely double bag your items. So what are some good containers to use? You want to be looking for containers that have positively locking lids and gasketed seals. And by a positively locking lid, it's not just something that you press on, but that actually has a way of locking the edges. And then gasketed seals are like a rubber gasket that's in there. And you may find that these containers are labeled as waterproof or water resistant. Lock and lock, rubber made lockets, and Sterilite Ultra Seal are good containers to use. In figuring out what sizes will work for you, you have to think about what you want to store and how many of those containers you might want. You also might want to think about the storage space that you have and the height of them for the given containers. I've got one spot on the boat that is spectacular and I wish that I could put my two flour containers on top of each other in there, but the locker unfortunately is just about one inch too short. So I can't fit them both there, so they have to go in a different spot. So think about what size containers will fit in the lockers that you have available, as well as how to access them. You don't need all of your baking stuff to be easily available all the time. You can have that ready sort of everyday use place, someplace that's easy to get to, and then the bulk of your storage can be elsewhere. If you're talking about box mixes, 
box mixes a lot of times nowadays have an inner bag containing the mix. And where that is the case, I take the inner bag out, I cut the directions off of the cardboard box, and I put the inner bag and the directions inside a freezer Ziploc. And then Carolyn will put those bags inside a larger plastic container with a locking lid. She and I both then throw the rest of the box away. Our boat has smaller storage spaces and a little bit harder to have those hard edges. And so I just double Ziploc my baking box mixes. The mixes take up a whole lot less room without the cardboard boxes. And they also don't attract the moisture. The cardboard boxes will attract moisture and they can have bugs in them. I do the same thing with boxes of crackers. I take them minus cutting out any directions off of the box, but I take the sleeves of crackers or whatever out of the cardboard box and put them in usually a double Ziploc. As far as baking powder and yeast go, I tend to just store baking powder. The one that's on the go, I will store in its regular can. Baking soda in the box inside a Ziploc. My excess ones, I will actually put in a Ziploc and put into a locker. And then yeast, I buy yeast in the one pound bags that you can find at Costco or online in a number of places. And I keep the yeast, once I've opened one of those big one pound bags, I put them into a lock and lock kind of container or some kind of a sealable container that I keep in the fridge. If I had a freezer, I would keep it in the freezer, but I don't have a freezer. The rest of that yeast and a one pound bag will last me for about a year of baking bread on a very regular basis. But I always have a spare bag of yeast ready to go. Again, I keep that bag in a Ziploc bag, double Ziploc bag, and I keep it as low in the boat as I can because that's the coolest part of the boat. If you happen to get bugs or moisture inside a container, there are just a couple things that you need to do. The first thing you want to do is get the stuff off the boat. Get the contents of that container off the boat. Not just into a trash bag that you're taking with you somewhere and going to have on the boat for a while, but actually off the boat. Whether it's gone moldy or if there are bugs in it, definitely dump it. And then you want to carefully check any nearby containers to see if they also have a problem. One of the ways that you might initially spot bugs and moths actually is if things look cobwebby. When you go into a flour container and you pull out a spoonful of flour, if there are cobwebby sorts of things on them, you may not see bugs, but that's the start of bugs. Get rid of them quickly, off the boat completely. If any nearby containers have a problem also, you want to pull everything out of the locker, wash it down with a bleach solution or a vinegar solution. The stronger solution, the better. Make sure it is totally dry before putting anything back into it. And when I say totally dry, it's usually not good enough to just wipe it down with a towel. But I'll wipe it down with a towel and then leave it in the sun for an hour or so, often upside down with a way for air to get into it. And if you have that gunky stuff inside the Ziplocs, don't try to reuse those. It's really hard to get them clean enough to be able to get all the bug and bug residue out of it. Trash them right away. That's a little bit harder if you are at sea, because obviously you're not going to throw the Ziplocs away. But hopefully you've got a really wonderful kind of a plastic bag or plastic box of some sort that has a top for it. Generally, you can pick up water bottles, unfortunately, on any beach. And if you use a chopstick or something, you can actually shove an awful lot of other plastic into that one water bottle. And then you don't have lots and lots of, of space taken up with dead plastic. But that's a way to tighten it down so that the stuff that's in that Ziploc can't get out to the rest of things. But that's it. A couple things to think about when you're storing your baking ingredients. You're looking for a really good plastic container with a positively locking lid and gasketed seals. Think about what sizes you need. 
And if you can't use those kinds of things, think about freezer weight Ziploc bags. And yes, to me, there is actually a pretty big difference between Ziploc and other brands. This is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form, but I've found that Ziplocs tend to last quite a lot longer. So I do go for the name brand when I'm talking about storing things on the boat for a long time. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you and we can share what our favorite current storage containers are and what special tips you may have for me and I might have for you because inevitably as cruisers, we learn from each other all the time. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love hearing from our listeners. We love it when you share us with your friends. We love it when you don't forget to subscribe. And we love it when, if you've learned something from us or found some value in it in some way, you leave us a five-star review because it makes it much easier for other people to find us. Have the most spectacular week.